Hi folks, today I'll be showing you how I painted up this cobalt in this video sponsored by Hero Forge. Alright, so I based this in a black primer and this is the um, high quality plastic miniature from Hero Forge. And to start it off, I figure just go for the classic cobalt coloring of that kind of red color with Mephiston red. I really enjoyed uh, building this guy on Hero Forge. As soon as I saw the um, those kind of construct uh, wings, I knew I had to do a cobalt um, who wanted to have wings but didn't have any. All right, so for the eyes, we're coming in with Uriel Yellow and a very fine brush. And I'm just kind of going in uh, sideways to get kind of the angle of the eye here uh, and just painting that in. And because cobalts, you know, don't have uh, that detailed of an eye, I'm just going to go in with black and stripe down the pupil. And I'm doing this ever so slightly to the front of center of the eye, uh, just to avoid the cobalt from looking um, googly eyed, like, you know, if you put uh, like a, a really bad puppet. Um, so yeah, I've got, again, this very fine brush and you've seen that I've um, actually dabbed off a little bit onto my finger. I'll sometimes do that if I find I have too much on the brush. You can find this allows for a little bit more control. And I wanted a lot of the clothing to have this kind of leather effect, uh, but a different color leather than I'm going to end up doing the wings. So I'm painting in Adrian Flesh. I actually did two layers of this to really get that nice um, saturated color. Uh, as you can see on this first layer, it is a little bit translucent. Uh, I find P3 paint paints are um, not quite as uh, dark as a lot of contrast paints, or not dark, but see, they are a little bit more see-through. Alright, so to add a little bit of dimension, I'm bringing an Agrath Earthshade onto the skin and then also onto that um, leather clothing. I find Agrath Earthshade is a really nice color to paint over red because it kind of makes those shadows a little bit deeper, um, but it doesn't kind of dull out the red as like a null oil would, um, but it also doesn't make it too, too red if you were to go with a red shade. Right, to give a kind of scale effect, I'm coming back in and I'm just doing this stippling effect with um, kind of an old brush that I don't care about messing up the tip with. And I'm stippling back in that Mephiston red and then I'm going back in again with Evil Sun Scarlet. And uh, with this lighter color, I'm focusing much more on the parts of the mini that would naturally have um, a little bit lighter of a color where the light's going to hit it, just to give some of those smoother areas a little bit more of that kind of scaly effect. And then I'm also using the Evil Sun Scarlet to come through and add a little bit of highlights onto the face of this cobalt. I also did this on like the feet and the hands. Okay, to get the pants of this little guy done. I decided to do it in Mechanis Standard Gray. Bring a little bit more of a cool tone in, um, but I didn't want to go fully black and I didn't really want to go blue. I liked keeping a lot of these colors kind of either neutral, or, um, like a neutral cool tone or um, a very warm color. And to add a little bit more dimension to that, just coming in with Nuln Oil. So this is a case where, yeah, the null oil is going to look really good on the gray. It's going to kind of darken up those recesses uh, and really, you know, the black and gray works well. Whereas I feel like over the red, um, it just kind of, it doesn't read as much as skin <laughs> um, to me. So to make the uh, kind of leather fabric, whatever you want to call it, on these wings, I'm painting in with Scrag Brown, and I did two layers of this uh, to get, again, that good coverage over the black, uh, and just kind of focusing in on the cloth portions of it. Now to get a little bit of a leather effect, I'm again using that kind of um, stippling motion in Towel Light Ochre to add in a little bit of variation. And I'm just kind of picking a bit of random spots, trying to pay attention to where those seams are on this uh, to maybe not cross over those seams, but to give it a little bit of um, kind of a leather effect. And then there were a couple spots where I felt it was a little bit too kind of much of a contrast. So I came back in with some of the scrag brown to kind of 
uh, stipple a wet blend, I suppose you could say. For this trim, I chose Screaming Skull, again keeping a little bit of a warmer white um, for this trim and the little ties on it. And now to add even more of that kind of leather effect, I am stippling in contrast snake bite leather. So again, I'm using a slightly bigger brush on this one, um, one that I don't care uh, too much if the very tips of it get a little damaged and just stippling in. And it, I will say it does look quite dramatic when you first put it on, um, but it does dry down a little bit. Uh, and it gives you that nice kind of weathered textured effect uh, that I, I think is cool. It seems like something that this uh, cobalt kind of, you know, found, scavenged some parts of these and built these wings out of them. And to add in a little bit of dimension to the horns, I'm coming in with Dawnstone. I also use this Dawnstone on some of the pants and the belt that I had also painted that gray and dried bark for the supports of this wing. Uh, you know, I kind of wanted, I wanted the leather to contrast really well with uh, a much darker brown. So I figured, well, the dried bark, you know, uh, looks like he just scavenged some wood or tree branches for this. Now to basin um, for this really awesome um, kind of skeletal shield i'm using pallid witch flesh again which is a kind of cooler toned white uh, i actually did two coats of this and then i went back over it in skeleton horde and said it all contrast i think this is one of the easiest ways to do pretty good bone effects uh, this shield is one of the new additions on Hero Forge, so um, make sure that you're heading on over there because they're adding new items every week and they have thousands of parts to choose from, so you can really build your own custom mini today. All right, and then to bring out just a little bit more detail, I wanted these horns to really pop. Uh, I'm using Pallid Witch Flesh flesh mixed in with Dawnstone. These horns are also really cool. I like how Hero Forge has options to combine multiple different horns so you can really get um, a, a unique look to any of your horned kobolds, dragons, demons, what have you. All right, to pick up these ties on the wings, I'm coming back in with Tau Light Ochre, so kind of bringing a color I've already used back into this mini and I painted all of those straps as well as I went in and painted all of the kind of little stitches on these wings. That was a really nice little detail effect that it does look like these are just kind of really thrown together wings. Um, who knows if they would actually work. <laughs> and uh, to finish off, there were a couple of just um, uh, ties on this skeleton shield. So I'm coming in with Scrag Brown to paint those in. And I realized I wanted to add a little bit of a highlight to the wood supports. So I'm just coming in with Gothor Brown, uh, paying attention to kind of where the light is going to hit this and just doing a very quick highlight along these supports. Now, in a previous video, somebody asked how I based uh, the mini, added kind of a, a basing effect to it. I do like the kind of wave sand effect of the Hero Forge base, but I decided to show you that again. So I'm coming in just with a craft glue. Um, you can use a uh, super glue or something like that. This is just like a, you know, water soluble craft glue. I find it works just fine and I can clean it out of my brushes using an old brush. And then I shove it in a little thing of um, sand that is designed for miniatures. I will say, uh, you know, if you're getting sand like from the actual beach, uh, there might be creatures in it. So maybe go with uh, the um, processed stuff. I kind of dip it in there, give it a little bit of a tap and there you go. It uh, covers it pretty well and you can still see a bit of the wave from the actual base of this mini. 
All right, there you go. There is the finished miniature. Again, thank you so much to Hero Forge for sponsoring this video. If you want to start designing your own custom miniature today, head on over to HeroForge.com and check out all of the thousands of different parts that they have to choose from, the dozens of ancestries, and they're constantly adding new features every week. Head on over to HeroForge.com to start building your custom mini today. So if you used any of the techniques in this video, um, what color cobalt would you have painted this guy? I'd love to hear that down in the comments below. All right, I'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye.